Hi everybody, my name is Rosemary Durrell, Relationship and Transformational Coach from Cape Town and welcome to my Creative Journey series. I have made a mission discovering incredible people with inspirational stories to share with you. So one of my guests is uh, Nompikazi Mokhatle, who is the founder and CEO of Nompikazi Communications, which is a marketing strategy company. But more than that, she's also a runner up for Mrs. South Africa. So Nompi, welcome. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you so for having me. It's a pleasure. And I think we're going to just jump straight into it. And maybe you'd like to tell our viewers about your journey to Mrs. South Africa. How did that happen? Sure. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's this journey of Mrs. SA has really just shown me how God has a sense of humor. Um, you know, currently we're in the running and as we stand, we're still in the semi-finalist stage and, you know, soon in the next couple of weeks, we'll be cut down to 25 finalists before the big date come November. But I think it's definitely, um, I say God has a sense of humor because I didn't really go out looking for, you know, to be a part of it uh, in such a way that, you know, it was, it was kind of introduced to me through friends. Um, at the time, first time I was kind of acquainted with the concept of Mrs. SA was last year during an interview, a friend show that she was producing for, for TBN. And the lady that I was being interviewed with, Kathy Heaton, she's a pageant mentor. So during the show, uh, we're talking about marriage. Uh, the name of the show is called The Wife. And so at the end of the show, after the recording was done, she comes to me, she's like, you should really think about entering Mrs. South Africa. And, you know, that for me was the first time I ever came across the concept. And I actually thought that she was joking. I thought maybe, you know, whatever you're on, I want some of that. Um, so it really seems so unfamiliar, a, a concept to me. You know, I'm like, I've never gone into pageantry, yet alone, you know, modeling or anything of the sort. Um, and I just held on to her business card and engaged my husband on it. And, you know, it was round about February this year when um, Mohakia then said to me, so think about it and... Uh, he went ahead and paid for my entry uh, online and then sent me the form. It was like, your deadline is midnight, so you best get on it and get on board. And I was almost like flabbergasted. I'm like, how could you? I felt like almost betrayed. I'm like, but this is something I haven't even familiarized myself with. But I went ahead and filled in the application and like almost angrily typing for a computer. Um, and not necessarily angry, but, you know, definitely felt un uncomfortable. And I think that's what it was where... My husband was supporting me because he saw that this is an opportunity that would get me out of my comfort zone. I think that's why I was kicking and screaming because I almost did know that as well. And I didn't want to admit that fact that this is really going to activate me. And that's really what has happened since being a part of it. And when I was selected, which came at such a, such a surprise. Um, so yeah, I do really feel like that stubborn child who's been pulled, but it's for my own good that I've been put into this. And I think, my first encounter when all the women were gathering at Empress Palace for the first workshop, you come to realize just how massive and important a platform it is, not because of the pageantry and the glamour that comes with it, but more so because you are around women who are such powerhouses in their own rights. You know, Rose, the, the, the age group is 25 to 50 years, and already you're going into a different category of women. You're talking about mothers, you're talking about business owners, you're talking about, you know, women with experience, academia across multiple industries, and they're taking that ownership in their respective spaces. And I think that's when I was immediately um, in respect of the platform, because it's nothing that these women take lightly. You know, the fact that they are there means that it has such value, and they call it the MBA of life for that reason, that in each of our own rights and journeys and age groups, there's a reason why we're all in that room. Yes, there's only one crown, but this journey has its own purpose for each of us. And it's up to us to recognize that first and foremost, and to make sure that it's not a wasted opportunity. And it's never gonna be exactly the same for any two women. Um, it's what you make of it. So you could be a very passive contest contestant where you just contribute, you create your content, but it, started, it starts and ends there. You don't use it to dig deep and get very, very uncomfortable uh, and grow as a result of it. Um, so it is really what you make out of it, irrespective of the crown come November. What's your preconceived idea about Mrs. South Africa that made you 
sort of angry. No, 100%. And as you say, that is part of the reason I was kicking and screaming because, you know, I think the stigma that comes with the world of pageantry is, you know, um, for me, I was like, well, I'm not a Barbie doll. I'm not a model. Um, you know, I want to add proper value. And Rose, you and I have worked, in, you know, we've worked together in the past in, you know, through SIPLA and the NGO work we've done. And that for me was the only way one could add value, you know, working deeply in, in communities and upliftment. And so that to me was almost like my very limited view of, you know, impact. And so I never associated a pageant having that kind of, you know, contribution and, you know, forcing that kind of movement within women. Cause I, I just, I was like, you know, I refuse to be uh, a, an influencer on social media, holding a bottle of Volpo perfume, whatever, and taking a selfie and like buy one today. Cause that's not me. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely sarcastic. I'm, you know, I've got dry humor. I'm a biggie unearth and you know, that's what I didn't want to lose any of that. And I'm grateful that I've been able to actually activate things that make me uniquely me and it's not for everybody. And that's a good thing. You know, there's people out there who will resonate with it, but there are others who weren't and you shouldn't want to be everything to everybody. The first time I met you in that office at Sipla amongst a hundred people, um, you, I was attracted to you immediately because of your unique and refreshing and creative and vintage and traditional and culture all mixed together in the way you dress. Your inherent essence of dressing and of style was there. I remember one day when you wore your husband's jacket to work and you turned up the sleeves and you'd given it pizzazz and it looked absolutely really magnificent. You have a style, you have a charm. <laughs> a way of addressing eclectically. Wow, Rose, I feel like, you know, I hope your listeners don't think that I paid you to say that um, because that's just such a, such a beautiful, um, you know, endorsement from you. Um, you know, I consider you such a beautiful close friend of mine and to hear those words are extremely humble. I'm actually blushing um, as we speak. I thought but, so, I um, thought so. Well, I, I, I think... <laughs> and you know I still wear my husband's jackets um because yeah for that reason I think it's just you know a part of who I am and what I look for when it comes to representing myself for me fashion was never really the first and foremost things it was definitely one of the ways that I found I was able to express myself call it almost the lowest hanging fruit when it comes yeah. to self-expression Yes. Um, but I think it, intrinsically, it comes from my upbringing. Um, my sister and my sister and I always just recognized how, you know, growing up in a single parent household and watching our mom, who really has been the hardest worker and the biggest like hustler of note, and irrespective of a good or a bad season, because we all go through seasons, good and bad. And with her, you could never tell if you're not in it if she was going through a bad season. And, that, and I attribute a lot of that firstly to God's grace, you know, to, you know, kind of keeping her in a, in a good state of mind that, you know, she never really crumbled uh, or fell apart when things were tough, but more, you know, more so for when she was out there, the world could never see when we were going through tough times. And I think it's, that's based on, you know, your mentality and how you represent that in terms of how you show up which is obviously through how we dress for the day and all of that. And she would pr put proper consideration in terms of what she would wear and why. And a lot of that has stuck with me and my sister, even to this day. And thank God, you know, she's still around to critique us on how we do that. But, you know, that's a very big contribution. And she's a massive contributor to not only the way I dress and the eclectic elements, because I steal from her wardrobe every day. And there's garments in her wardrobe that I still won't find in the most premium of boutiques because things just aren't the same anymore. Your dignity and, and trying to maintain a lot of that. And like I said, God's grace plays a huge part in that. Um, but never, you don't want to show, you, the world shouldn't see good or bad days. You know, you, it's, it's just about having that strength, that inner strength and conviction and courage to still face the world and do it with your shoulders back and with shoulder pads, pretty much. Exactly, but yeah. exactly. I think that's called resilience um, and grit. So just tell me, just going back to your first meeting um, on, on the Mrs. South Africa stage, what, what was the most striking 
impression you had when you were in that room with all of those diverse women between the ages of 35 and 50, all from different yeah. backgrounds? What struck you? Sure. I think definitely awness, like I was in awe. That's definitely the first thing. And, and, and respecting how it's able to mobilize such a broad spectrum of women from different walks of life. You know, there are women there from Sanin, from the Western Cape, from George, from Bloom. Like it's, it's, it's you know, it, there's no kind of defining demographic. It's, rec it's, it's the recognition of women as you see yourself and using that as your essence to get you through this. Kind of being introduced, because it's like an induction, you know, your first workshop is very much understanding what they stand for. And never in any of the engagements was there a certain way we needed to look in terms of body as well. Because, I mean, if we're talking about it's 25 to 50 and like, you know, you can get 40 year olds who have, you know, slim figures or silhouettes. And, you know, the younger of us, you know, I, I've got mass, I've got curves, you know, I've got the thighs and I've got the bum. Um, and, you know, there's no one set, like set way that, you know, they wanted us to kind of, be groomed into what they were advocating and are still advocating is okay you're here we've recognized you and the reason we've recognized you and put you in this room is because you have something to offer you have something to bring to this table that we want you we want to draw out of you so that it to your betterment and obviously you know carries the brand and and the association to Mr. South Africa hopefully on a global scale um, and that's what I really respect about the platform because that's, that still remains true to, you know, what it stands for. There was, there, we're not there to be unified in terms of a, a, a certain template of a woman. Tell me what, what happens next with Mrs. South Africa? So you, how many women are in the semi-finalists at the moment? So we started off with 100 at the beginning of the year, um, and I think a few have dropped out, but a handful. Um, so we're still very much closer to the 100 than, you know, anything else. So I'll call it 100 just, you know, to be on the safe mark. And um, we've been running, you know, for a couple of months now, and already initially we were meant to be in judging week, in fact, you know, being the end of June, July, actually, um, because of, you know, the lockdown and having it extended, which has then pushed our dates a bit further. So we still currently had 100 semi-finalists and come the adjusted date, in fact, this morning we, we had a, a, a webinar with the team and they've adjusted the dates to the 20th of August, which is when the final, you know, the semi-finalist night will take place. And that's when they will announce the top 25. When we, when we participate in Mrs. SA from the word go, so from February, we have contractual agreements or obligations to, you know, create content for their, their sponsors. And that's what we have to do. And that's what they look at as well. How well have we been able to keep to our obligations in terms of, you know, credible content online um, and representing, you know, their portfolio of brands that they've been, um, onboarded. Um, and that's, that's an ongoing uh, 20th of August is what we call judging week. And it's spread over two days and they split us up over those two days. And there are certain activities that we will be un, you know, going through, one of which is swimsuit. And uh, you know, I, when I heard that, I cringed immediately in the beginning because you know, again, this was not me, I'm, I'm not a Barbie doll. Um, and that counts 35% towards the final mark that you know, is given to us and um, then 65 yeah, 65% is then interviews, which is when a whole panel of, you know, uh, judges will be asking questions, you know, and they ask, you know, it's, it's pretty much trying to gauge really who you are. And the last part of it is admin, which is the, the balance of it. Now, in the admin kind of, um, you know, gambit, it's really just how well we've been able to keep to our, like, how good are we with our um, administration, with raising our, our funds, you know, from different sponsors, etc., and come, you know, once they've done, added up all those points and it gets to, you know, you find maybe a couple of us are tying or let's say there's two who have almost the exact same score. That's where voting plays a huge part. And that's why you'll see a lot of us having advocated for people to support us through SMSs. 
Um, and, you know, that'll be almost like what tips us um, to get through if you find two candidates are equal in terms of their scoring, then the last thing they look at is the SMSs. I think I have to just give credit to the journey in terms of what it's activated. So Mrs. S.A. forced me to kind of come out and reactivate myself. Phenomenal. Nompe, I want to wish you all the best on this journey. I, I'm dying to get feedback. We're going to get people to send SMSs for Mrs. South Africa. And thank you for thank this you. Um, incredible interview. And I wish you all the best. And I hope that COVID allows the curtain to be lifted sooner than later. So thank mm -hmm. you so very, very much.